Hey guys, it's Colin. It is 8 in the morning. I'm in the parking lot of All American Harley Davidson. Why am I up this early? A couple hours before they even open because I'm meeting Lyndon and Keith. And Lyndon and Keith both work at this dealership. Lyndon is the director of operations. You've probably seen him in several of my videos. And Keith is the sales manager. And where are we going? We're going to actually Richmond, Virginia. It's about two hours south of DC and about an hour and 45 minutes from here. And we're actually going to a place called Richmond, appropriately named Harley Davidson. And why are we going there? They're actually going to test ride and check out the new Harley Davidson Pan America. Harley Davidson is doing a demo event or demo events for 44 or 45 different dealerships throughout the country where they're taking them and they are letting them ride BMWs, KTMs, Ducatis and the Pan America and they're kind of getting some compare and contrast type things. But ultimately it's for to get some information so then they can take it back to their dealerships and learn all about the bike and uh, you know they invited me they invited me along and I'm gonna be doing some video for them I'm gonna do a future seminar here at the dealership and so I'm gonna be taking a lot of different things and I want to take you guys along for the ride first time I've actually rode with these two and they have really sweet bikes we're taking the back roads of Maryland Southern Maryland to get to uh, what we call a 301 bridge and that's gonna take us straight through Richmond so we're just now starting got about an hour and 40 minute ride looking forward to it We're a little over two miles from the dealership. We had to get on the highway the last couple miles. We've been riding back roads the whole way down here. Some beautiful sights, man. So we had to take 95. I'm dreading it. I'm not a big highway rider. I always like, I prefer back roads. But uh, we should be coming up on your right here. There it is, right up the highway. That is Richmond Harley Davidson. And they got the semi right over there with the actual Pan Americas. Kind of exciting, huh? coming up to the dealership as we speak. This is Richmond Harley Davidson. It's about 10 minutes outside of the city of Richmond. Looks like we're pulling in here. Check this out guys, surrounded by Pan Americas. Got a whole row of them out here. You look at these things for the first time and they're like, wow, they're pretty tall bikes. Me being 6'4", I won't have any issues with, I'm not gonna have any issues with like keeping my feet down. I know they've got that feature with the shocks where it lowers you a couple inches, but still, these are nice, man. Seen them up close, they're wild. Easiest way to tell the difference, aside from cosmetic features, between a Special and a 1250. Because again, we're gonna change badges and everything. So this year, badges on a 1250, but also look at the fork caps. The 1250s have anodized fork caps with a manual preload and a manual rebound. All 1250 Specials, are gonna have the single line going into the left side. That's, that's for your semi-active suspension. Suspension settings can be changed through the menu. They're gonna change with your different ride modes. Anywhere from a comfort to a uh, balanced, they call it, and then all the way up to a firm suspension. I think there are six total different modes for that. All the specials we have here do have the optional adaptive ride height. And that's what's raising the motorcycle as it's pulling away and lowering as it comes to a stop. That's going to be easily identified on your shop or on your showroom floor by the two lines going into your right side fork tube. A couple other key notable differences between the specials and the standards. Standards come with a plastic skid plate. Specials have an aluminum skid plate. We also have a P&A skid plate available that's full length all the way back to the uh, primary muffler. Specials come with a steering damper that's available through P&A as well. They come with the accessory wind guards and hand protection. Specials also come with a center stand. Um, if you're not familiar with bikes with center stand or with the adventure touring world, don't try and fight it. A lot of people struggle and try to lift the bike up and pull it up. Try to find that spot where it's level and let it do all the work. It's really, I was doing, literally just using my toes you have no idea how many people struggle and try and you know, pull the bike up. Spec 
specials also come with the engine guards. Um, as standard, as you can see, these standard models do not have those. All models have adjustable windshields, so it is a trigger action. There's a finger trigger to lock, and then three positions. In all positions, there is wind buffeting as well, so you get that you know same thing typically that we used to use that we did with the uh, slipstream vent, so you don't have the buffeting against your helmet. Models with adaptive ride height. The way it works is it's using the body control module, it's using the inertial measurement unit to actually, as you're coming to a stop and start to slow down, the bike's lowering, and the bike picks back up, back up as you accelerate. Just due to the inertia of the bike itself, it's really hard to detect. You don't feel it going up and down. The only real indicator to the rider is there's a shock icon that's going to flash next to the gear shift indicator to show you that it is active. But now watch the bike when I turn it on. Hmm. Controls are really straightforward. Right hand control is going to be your uh, master power and your starter switch. The mode button to switch between ride modes is up on the top. Everything with the thumb is going to be your infotainment and your navigation controls if you have a phone paired up. Then traction control and push to talk. Left hand side is going to be high beam, low beam, cruise control, horn. Turn signals are both on the left, left stock, so left is left, right is right, push to cancel, and they are self canceling as well and then your menu mode. So through the menu modes you can custom configure your dashboard to show all of the little, little widgets or just be a basic display. You can go through to change and program all your ride modes and I'll get to that in a second. So uh, starting out in rain mode. Rain mode is going to do a couple of things. Rain mode is going to slow down the acceleration rate. It's going to limit the total top end power and it's also going to turn up the sensitivity on all the rider safety enhancements. So traction control sensitivity is going to be way up, front wheel lift mitigation, drag torque slip control, ABS. The other thing we're doing is through the variable valve timing, we're taking out almost all the engine braking. So you won't have that drag, that rear wheel drag. You can also, in any of the modes, any of these are customizable if you build out a custom mode. So you can change the performance mapping of the engine, you can change the throttle response, you can dial back all the rider safety enhancements, and you can either increase or decrease the engine braking. So for example, if you're way up in the mountains doing a lot of on-road, you want to coast downhill a lot, you can dial out that engine braking so you don't have the resistance. Same thing too if you're off-road and you're doing a lot of hill descent. You dial up that engine braking real high, let the clutch out and literally just let the thing creep downhill in gear. Um, all those are customizable. Switching to road mode, road mode is a lot wider power band, a lot more linear torque curve. Still plenty of power, uh, about a mid to mid soft suspension setting and about a normal, you know, about an average setting. Maybe a little bit more intrusive, not quite as rain but not as minimal as sport for the uh, rider safety enhancements. Shifting to sport mode, you're changing the engine mapping drastically. So very quick throttle response, it's very peaky. Um, full engine power, and then you're dialing back those safety enhancements as well. So you still have traction control and you still have ABS. All right, I think that's about it. We'll get you guys out on the ride. This is what we came for. There's a Harley Davidson Semi, and around the corner here, they're about to go out again. And it's so unfair because I can't go out because I'm not a Harley Davidson dealer employee. But hey, at least I can get here and talk to the guys and they can tell me all about it. So what they did is they brought several bikes and they're heading out right now. I think they had like almost 15, 20 bikes here, mostly Pan Americas. And then they have the Pan America Special, they have the Pan America. And then they brought a couple of the uh, competitors. So we've got Ducati, BMW, KTM. And what they're doing is they're doing like three or four rides each. And then they talk about the comparisons between them all so they can go back to the dealership. But I'm excited just to be here and show you guys this up close. This thing is totally badass looking. It really is. It's sharp. When Lyndon gets back, or Keith, one of them, I'm going to have him tell me about it, tell me all the different rides, and then share it with all you guys. It's really a, a, a neat bike. Um, the, uh, you know, the category of adventure motorcycle is not new. Uh, but Harley is new to it, and uh, for a first bike, I mean really for any bike, is very impressive. Uh, but it, it included a lot of stuff, including adaptive ride height, which is, I think they're the first ones to have done that. And, and what that does is it lowers the bike a couple inches when you come up to a stop. You did feel it, but it wasn't intrusive. Uh, coming up to a stop, I, I generally just put what, one foot down, so it wouldn't have been a big deal one way or the other. When you notice it most is if, if it's lowered and then you uh, you get on the bike and you start it and it raises up uh, or if it's high and you get on the bike and it's a little bit of a reach and you start the bike and it drops down. 
Well, the motor is is really a terrific motor. Uh, it, it's a, a V-twin, uh, so in, in that respect, it's sort of traditional Harley, but it departs in every other way. It's liquid-cooled. Um, it has variable valve timing, and, and what that does is give it uh, the kind of performance that you would want at any RPM range. So typically uh, with a, uh, a, an internal combustion motor, the camshaft determines the personality of the motor and it's only at its peak power at you know, one area in the RPM. So with variable valve timing, you can put that everywhere. Um, and it also allows it to uh, adjust the engine braking. Uh, so you can have a lot of engine braking or very little engine braking, which is a really neat feature um, depending on the kind of riding that you're doing or the kind of style of riding that you prefer. Okay, so this is the special and uh, behind your camera is the standard. Some ways that you can tell them apart is on the special, you've got these brush guards, uh, which are not standard on the standard. You've got these little hand protectors. I guess it gives you a little bit of protection if you're going into the woods, uh, but also would be nice weather protection. Um, it has uh, the available adaptive ride height, which we just discussed, uh, that the standard does not. It's got a steering damper, uh, which is an accessory you can add to the standard. Uh, it's got this extra light up here, extra fancy light, more light, more better. It comes with heated grips, uh, oh, stock, cool. uh, something that can be added to the standard. The seat is another interesting thing. So this seat actually has the ability to be put in two different positions. Right now it's in a lower position, but with no tools, you just take this seat off and put this in a slightly different position so it's about an inch higher. So between the adaptive ride height and just a stock seat, you've got a lot of ability to raise or lower the bike. Yeah, these are, um, I really like these wheels. So a, a, a spoke wheel, um, is really good for off-road. It, it, uh, it is less brittle. It, it has a lot of strength for hitting some stuff you may not want to hit. Uh, but one of the problems is you got 40 holes for all those spokes in, in your rim. And um, tubeless, tubeless tires are just better, more convenient. You know, if you have to repair a tubeless tire, it's not a really good idea. But if you have to do a, a, a repair and you're out in the middle of nowhere, it's nice to know that you have the ability to do it. And because these spokes come outside of the bead area, uh, this can be both a spoke wheel and tubeless. Uh, that is the Screaming Eagle exhaust, and I'm sure it's lighter, but I haven't been able to pick one up. On another model, uh, which was a similar muffler, uh, it, it probably dropped 25 pounds off the weight of the bike. Uh, I think the red line on this thing is 9,000 RPMs. I, I took it up to about 885. Um, and I, it was a little, because it has three balancers, I expected it to be a little smoother. It was quite smooth, but it's funny, I rode uh, the other three competitive bikes, and then I got back on this one and did the same thing, and it really was smooth. So the other ones, the BMW is probably the smoothest, but the, the Ducati had an awful lot of vibration uh, all through the range. I mean, they're all good bikes, but, um, I will say this one was my favorite. So to me, this has got a pretty tough masculine look to it. Um, and this is the KTM. It, the motor and transmission on that KTM is uh, really nice. It's a, a blazingly fast motor and nice shifting transmission. But it's, um, it's probably more than I need and it's a little twitchier. The, the Pan America, although it doesn't produce quite as much power, produces a lot, and it's just so much smoother. And this is the BMW, which is an absolutely amazing machine in so many levels. But to my eye, it's not a looker. And lots of people don't care about that, right? They'll say it's not supposed to look good, it's supposed to work well, uh, and it certainly does. But if you can have both, both is better. You know, that's a growing segment in the motorcycle market that uh, Harley-Davidson is entering. And in Europe, it's um, a, a much larger segment than it is in the US. Uh, so I think that they'll do very well with it. And I think that motor is a home run. You want to check out these bags? Yeah. So this is actually pretty cool. Uh, so, you know, you've got this that 
aims to keep your belongings on the inside. And how do how do I pull this off again, John? Oh, you have to use the key. Right. And then pull up on the handle. Oh, cool. And so it actually, there's uh, two other bags that Harley has that require a little bracketry over here, but this actually just fits on with the stock merchandise. And this thing's pretty light, um, holds a fair amount of stuff. It's a pretty nice design. Yeah, a friend of mine told me that he preferred soft bags for adventure touring and he had a specific oh reason for it and I've forgotten. They certainly don't look as clean, yeah. um, but uh, there's, uh, at least one person out there that thinks that there's a practical benefit from them. It's definitely a different riding position, um, but it's that way for a reason, right? So you want to be able to stand up on your pegs, and if your feet are in front of you, you just aren't balanced well. I mean, if you stand up on your street glide, you have to really be pulling yourself forward and you're just not well balanced. You have to be way over the tank in order to stand up. With your feet underneath you, it's pretty easy to stand up. And what standing up does is actually, even though you are higher, it actually puts the overall mass of the rider and vehicle, it, it makes the center of gravity a little lower because your weight is really on the pegs. Dude, so damn cool that I was able to stop by Richmond Harley Davidson right there. We're passing it on the left. As a back on 95, heading back home, taking an hour and a half, hour, 45 minute trip. So, uh, because these guys invited me today, I'm going to take them out for a nice lunch. And then I was thinking, you know, just fast food or something. No, they're breaking out with saying, we're going to a seafood place on the beach. And I didn't have the heart to tell them that I don't like seafood, but it's like I'm going to be out some money. But uh, hey, well worth it, man. I can't thank these two enough in front of me for giving me a chance to come up here and see the Pan America uh, live and in person before it actually comes out. But I tell you what though, guys, that bike's, that bike's gonna sell, it really will. It looked awesome up close and talking to these two guys, not all of us that you just saw on camera, they couldn't speak high enough about it. And that's not just because they're Harley guys, they're, they're really, we're honest, to say, Damn, this is a badass bike. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Now get out there and ride, be well. And I'll talk to you guys soon.